My name is Dr. Ashwin Anantakrishnan from the Division of Gastroenterology at the Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. And I'd like to invite you to this discussion on our study looking at the incidence of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis in association with prior depressive symptoms. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis affect over 1 million Americans. They are chronic immunologically mediated diseases that affect the intestine. And we're increasingly increasingly improving our understanding of the pathogenesis of these conditions. We know that both genes and environment are important in how these conditions develop and why some people develop these conditions. And there's been growing research in the recent decade about various environmental risk factors for these conditions. We know from our experience and from studies that anxiety, depression, and other psychological morbidity are common in people with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. But the question has always been, do these psychiatric comorbidities, in particular depression and stress, do they increase one's risk of developing Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis if they never had the disease before? Anecdotal case reports suggest that this may be the case, but there's very limited high-quality data that is examining this question in a prospective fashion. So my co-authors and I embarked on this study to look at the incidence of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis in two large cohorts from the Harvard School of Public Health to examine if prior depression or depressive symptoms affects one's risk of developing Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. So the data source for our study was the Nurses' Health Studies. There are two kinds of Nurses' Health Studies. The Nurses' Health Studies 1, which was started in 1976, and the Nurses' Health Study 2 that was started in 1989. These studies each include over 100,000 female registered nurses who were enrolled at 1976 and 1989 respectively, and then followed with questionnaires every two years with periodic assessment of various medical conditions that come up as well as various environmental exposures. Beginning in 1992 in the Nurses' Health Study 1 and 1993 in the Nurses' Health Study 2, these women participating in these studies were asked about depressive symptoms using a validated questionnaire called the Mental Health Index, MHI-5. This question asked the women over the past month how often have they felt happy, how often have they felt calm, nervous, blue, or depressed. The total score from all these five questions are then added together and then summed out to a total of 100. The higher one scores in this category the lower is the risk of depressive symptoms. Usually scores below 52 correlate fairly well with clinical depression. So what we did was we took data from women who filled out these questionnaires in 1992 and 93. These questionnaires were also repeated in 96, 2000, 95, and 2001 in the Nurses' Health Study 1 and 2 respectively. We then categorized women into four categories depending on their response. We looked at their baseline depressive symptoms, which was depression at the very first questionnaire they filled out, which was 92 or 93, depending on which nurse's health study you are in. We also looked at the most recent questionnaire that they filled out, which is usually within four years of diagnosis of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. We then used a statistical technique called the Cox Proportional Hazards Model, adjusting for other known risk factors for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis to examine if depressive symptoms even before their diagnosis influences an individual's risk. What we found very interestingly was that for Crohn's disease, having depressive symptoms four years before diagnosis significantly increased a woman's likelihood of developing Crohn's disease. The odds ratio for this association was about 2.4, which meant that women who reported depressive symptoms, which is they had a mental health index score of less than 52, were twice as likely to develop Crohn's disease compared to women who did not have depressive symptoms. If you look at Remote depressive symptoms, which is depressive symptoms in 1992 or 1993, we found that this association was slightly weaker, but still present for Crohn's disease. In contrast, for ulcerative colitis, we found that both recent or remote depressive symptoms were not associated with risk of ulcerative colitis. Again, I think it's very interesting to identify environmental risk factors that may potentially have a differential effect on Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, because finding such risk factors also helps improve an understanding of why these conditions develop. So in a sense, the take-home point from our study was that both remote and recent depressive symptoms do seem to increase a woman's likelihood of developing Crohn's disease in our study, with a more dominant effect seen for recent depressive symptoms. I think we need much greater research into how depression or stress affects the immune system, because clearly 
we know that depression and stress are more common in patients with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and I think this study, our findings suggest that depression and stress may even predate a diagnosis of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So I think it would be very interesting to examine how these psychosocial risk factors affect the immune system and through them affect how the disease develops and behaves. I thank you for your attention.